I call uh, Jan Logie. Uh, are the support for the Sue Moroni's Members Bill to extend paid parental leave to 26 weeks, even though sadly the bill doesn't contain that provision anymore because it was previously voted down by this government. Um, and I do want to take just a moment to properly commend Sue for the work, Ms Moroni, for the work that she has done in the very long process of shepherding this bill through the House and providing an opportunity for New Zealanders to express their overwhelming support for paid parental leave and the care for our smallest members of our society. And that support has been overwhelming and the Green Party appreciates your work and all of the compromises that you have made to try and get even the barest amount of provision through to those New Zealanders that were consistent with what they asked for through the select committee process. We've just heard from the previous member that when they're out on the streets, they hear New Zealanders asking for everything but paid parental leave. And, and I would ask that member to go back and look at the submissions and consider the parliamentary process and our democratic process that presented this bill and asked New Zealanders for their opinions. And to remind that member that there were 3,809 submissions made on 26 weeks paid parental leave. And just remind that member again that 3,795 submissions out of the 3,809 supported the extension to 26 weeks. That's 99.6% of submissions said they wanted 26 weeks. That, and even that 0.4% weren't necessarily against the bill. <laughs> they just had some concerns around some aspects of it for some of them. So, you know, this is like completely overwhelming support from the population saying they wanted 26 weeks. And to say that when you're out on the streets, you're not hearing any support for this bill, I find that hard to believe, and I refer you back to the parliament of which you are a member and ask you to listen to the democratic voices coming through this parliament. And I remind every member of this house that we are here and we set up these processes for people to participate for a reason, to inform us and the decisions we make in this House. And to ignore the views of New Zealanders in making those decisions does a discredit to this institution and to every single member of it. I also go back to the process to reflect on some of the process of this. And we've heard a lot of politicking tonight. And a mention that the member, Sue Maroney, has offered passion, but it's been confused with politics has been suggested by the Minister of Labour. And I really do want to challenge that, not that the Labour Party needs the Greens to support them or defend their honour, but it really does just seem horribly unfair and misrepresentative to me. When, in fact, the member extended the submission time and the consideration within the select committee to enable the members, the National Party members of that committee, who were overwhelmingly convinced by the evidence, to go back to their caucus to try and get support for this bill. And then that turned into the government putting something forward in the budget that was entirely different, that I absolutely supported and we voted in support of. I totally agreed with the extension of the provisions of paid parental leave to the groups that were missing out. That was a really important initiative. But it was not what Parliament and the people of New Zealand had been discussing. Um, and there was one clear submission that asked for that to happen, and I supported that, but the others didn't. 
The others were saying that 26 weeks was the fundamental thing that they wanted addressed, and that is what this bill has been seeking to do. So there was a huge amount of accommodation made by that member. And then the government turned around and sought to make personal political gain from it. And then we hear that now Sue Maroney, in looking at the numbers in this House, went and spoke with the ACT Party about whether they would seek this bill going back to committee stages to kind of actually debate some of the substance again. Um, and that she was able to convince the ACT Party member that the need for the 26 weeks and the democratic process and the request from New Zealanders. And that then when the National Party heard that that was happening, they called the member into the Prime Minister's office and said, you can't support this bill. To stop you doing that, we'll put forward and we'll deliver the content of this bill, but you can't support it through a Labour initiative. We'll do it. Now, that's politics, and I've got to say that deeply offends me. I'm not in this House to play political games. And I would have thought that every member in this House was here to deliver for New Zealanders, to listen to New Zealanders and to deliver for them. And that kind of politicking is not doing our job, in my opinion. It is playing politics and doing a disservice to New Zealanders. Though, you know, good on David Seymour <laughs> um, for actually listening and hearing the arguments as a new member and to actually seeing that, you know, the provisions which it had been reduced down to by Sue Maroney to ensuring 26 weeks for when there was a premature birth or when there was a child with an impairment who would entitle a person to government-funded disability support or um, when it was a multiple birth. So 26 weeks for those people... I'm so pleased that Sue Maroney's bill has prompted the delivery for them because who could not think that there was a clear need for those families and those babies to have time out of the workforce to be able to bond, to take care of health needs, to just be able to cope? And the submissions that we heard through Select Committee, again, I want to thank those submitters because they were tear-evoking submissions for every single member on that committee where we heard of people who'd be missed the early years of their childhood, child's life and had to look at photos of their babies to remember what they looked at like at that time because they'd had to go back to work. Of people who'd had managed to get 10 months to spend with their babies, who'd bonded with them and found a love of parenting, even though they actually hadn't wanted to be a parent before that, who'd managed to use that time to actually bond and connect and find a joy and we can only imagine the flow on benefits of that time to that parent, that family, and most importantly, that child. The submissions that we heard to get to the point of what this all was about, the evidence was overwhelming that the benefit of 26 weeks facilitates and bonding and attachment between the parent and baby, improves the health outcomes, the learning and the development of the baby for mothers, babies and children. The World Health Organization recognizes six months as the minimum for breastfeeding, it supports families and ensures stability of their incomes. It allows choice for women and maintaining workplace attachment. And it updates our employment conditions to recognize the contemporary world that we live in and that we have families, most of us, and that it's appropriate for workplaces to adapt to that. And that makes 26 weeks makes it easier for employers to manage time out and substitution of work play, um, workers. So this bill, the 26 weeks, it's not just a matter of what would be nice. For 110 million, which is the cost of what this was, the return to us as a country was judged by 99.6% of submitters as worthwhile. And it is a shame on this government that they've subverted the democratic process and are refusing to deliver that. I call Alfred Narrow.